Hi everyone, so I want to try something new in this channel. What I'll be doing is I will be doing longer summaries of interesting large language model papers that I find. And this would range from you know, how to combine large language models with information retrieval systems and how to build agentic workflows and so forth. So I usually spend a lot of time going through archive papers, uh, but I realized that I miss out on opportunities to actually go deeper on some papers. And what I want to do is I want to come from an angle of the application of large language models. I do teach a lot about large language models, you know, the prompt engineering aspects of it, how to build RAG systems. And, you know, I teach this to like startups. I do a lot of technical consulting as well and how to put these systems into the real world. But there's a lot of interesting insights and new ideas that are coming through some of these research papers that you know a lot of these companies like Meta and even universities, right, are presenting really interesting ideas. So how to push forward large language models you know, and how to make them more effective uh, for different applications. So I wanna start off with this interesting paper that I found yesterday. This paper, is about how to train LLMs to utilize information retrieval effectively. So we know with RAG systems, when you are incorporating some information retrieval you know, component to the system, right, you're getting some information that's external and that may have or may face some conflict with what the model already knows. So there are a lot of really interesting papers that are kind of digging deeper into this question of when exactly should the language model utilize context or external context from an information retrieval system and when not to use it. The idea behind this paper from Labruna Campos and Eskun here from the different universities here uh, is that you know, these information retriever systems, right, they are used for different things. And in this case, the scope of the problem is on question answering. They want to train a system or fine tune a system to make that decision when to use information retriever. And that's kind of really important, especially in open domain question answering, where sometimes the system will need to access external information or knowledge to be able to answer that question faithfully or accurately. So I think this is a great idea and you will see some of the results that they get. And I think it provides a little bit of ideas on how to approach when you don't have right a really good way or good system to decide when to use context or not. Because I think a lot of people are building RAG systems but just you know, leveraging the RAG system and not really focusing on when should we leverage the information retrieval system. What they have done here is something that I've seen a lot now with a lot of the fine tuning of LLMs to improve accuracy and efficiency. So here they're using what's called a special token. So essentially they have an explicit token, token RET that decides when to use that retrieval and when not to use it, right? So if the model, the fine-tuned model generates that token, then you know the system would go into the into an information retrieval or use an information retrieval system to actually collect the additional knowledge or passages that it needs to answer the question. I think the focus here is on this PopQA data set, which has like 14,000 questions and it's gonna be evaluated on this particular data set. So what they've shown with this data set is that while LLMs rely on sole on their performance parametric memories excel in addressing high popular questions from this data set, the efficacy dem diminishes for low popularity questions where using IR becomes crucial, right? So that's really important. That's why I think they needed to perform an extensive analysis on this problem. Now, this is basically a summary or an overview of what this paper is presenting. So at a high level, we have, you know, where is a question, usually that's coming from a user, right? And then we have a language model here that the size, and this is going to be the fine-tuned large language model. We will get into what that fine-tuned model is. That fine-tuned model is referred to as Adapt LLM. We'll present the algorithm in a bit. But here, the step-by-step -step is the, the model will generate RET, right? If it it is confident that it needs some external information or it needs to retrieve external information that will, pro will, will provide us context to the language model eventually to answer the question. 
And if it doesn't generate that, then it will just go straight into answering because it's confident it has that probably um, stored in its internal memory. So it will just generate the answer correctly. So I think this is very intuitive. I think this is a really cool idea, but we will see how effective this is in a bit. So there's a lot of details, there's extra readings. You can find a lot of interesting readings here, but I won't go through that. What I will focus on is the main aspects of the approach. So the first thing is this paper presents this ADAPT LLM method, which extends the idea of adaptive retrieval. So this is not a new concept. You can search the literature, you will find more on adaptive retrieval. It seems to be an interesting idea that a lot of like researchers are focusing on and measuring whether it's really impactful for a rack system. So that, that's that's kind of what they're doing here. And then here is basically a summary of the method. Here's the algorithm as well. I, the algorithm is quite straightforward to understand, to be honest. Here is kind of an explanation to it. First prompt containing the question is sent to the model. So basically there is sort of like a prompt that's used. Um, and then you can see here, right? So there is this initial, this is the kind of the data set that you're building. So you, it's, it's a process to build that data set, right? For the adaptive retrieval part. And you can see how the notation they use here. Uh, but you can see here that they have, they're using these uh, data sets, right? For creating the training data sets. And I believe they're using, let me see here, it's more towards the end here. They're using the NQ, natural question data set. And then also they're using this, the standard question answering data set as well for creating that training data set. Uh, the pop QA will be used for evaluation. So that's kind of how they have configured this experiment. So what they have done here is they have two different like processes here, right? And this algorithm explains it, right? So there is an if and then there's an else here. So they are building these instances that are used to fine tune that model, right? So at the end, we will have this particular uh, set that of, of, of data that we're interested in creating. And the way we're gonna create is we're gonna iterate over those training data sets where they provide a question, a goal answer, you know, the passages, right? So this is kind of the notation here. And then the first thing is we wanna generate an answer first with the language model. Right? And, the, and once we have that answer, then we can check if that answer is a goal answer. If it's a goal answer, because we have access to that, then what we're going to do is we're going to build you know, an, an instance of that. And we're going to use a parametric prompt. Then we have a question, then we have a golden answer. right? And that's added to the, the data set that we're building. So the parametric prompt here, if you can read this closely, you will see that it says, you know, for questions where the model response is accurate, which is line four right here, we build a training set instance incorporating the following prompt, which we will call parametric prompt. So there is this parametric prompt, right? This one right here uh, that says, answer the question Q. If you need help, answer RET to get the context. So it will build that prompt once it knows, right, the answer to it, right? And then alongside this prompt, it also includes the corresponding question and the golden answer as well, right? So we can see here in this set that it also has the golden answer. And that's it for those questions where the language model knows the answer, is confident about the answer. And then in contrast, if the language model fails to produce a correct response to the question, which is line eight, right? We're in the else now, in the else statement, we build two different instances. So there are two instances that are being created here, right? So the first one employs the parametric prompt, which was used, this is this prompt right here, right? With RET designated as the answer. So you know, all like this one that uses gold answer right here, and this one will use RET, right? Because this one will be telling the model or these are instances that will be telling the model that it needs to go into this kind of mode and it needs to retrieve this external information. So that's how I understood that instance is useful for. And so that's kind of one of those uh, instances that are created. And then also it will create, right? So you can see here, it's indicating the necessity for additional context. So this will decide, this will let the model or help the model to know when to use that additional context. Now the second prompt, context prompt encompasses contextual information alongside the question. So this one also has some additional information here, which is the additional context. 
Uh, so for this instance, we include the prompt, the question from Q and the golden answer from A and the corresponding context passage. You can see here that there is a context prompt as well. So there are two versions that are being created, right? This one doesn't have the RET. The reason that's really important, right? All of those instances, this summarizes basically why it's important. So it says here, this approach ensures that the model effectively learns to discern when context is necessary for answer questions or to provide a direct response when it suffices, as well as answer directly when provided with context. So that last one will help with that part, right? So that's kind of the different settings that it's aiming to try to satisfy. And so, you know, this the straightforward fine tuning, those data sets are used. And here we can start to see some of the results that this model is producing. So we can see here a little bit more closely here. So this one is a performance comparison. So they use the LAMA2 models, by the way, and it's, I think, the 7 billion model. And so here you can see with the different data sets that were used as training set, what they get in terms of the results. And obviously these settings right here, never retrieve is no retrieval used, and always retrieve is always used retrieval. So these are kind of the two baselines that are compared with, right? So you can see this is the method they are proposing. You can see how there is, Definitely some improvement in terms of accuracy. No, this is not perfect, obviously. I think this is a very difficult data set, this pop QA, but you can see that it's already providing some interesting uh, results and it hints at the fact that, you know, potentially building something like this that can decide for you automatically whether you need that extra context or not is going to be really helpful for the model, especially given what I said earlier, where we know that these RAC systems and language models have conflict with you know, producing faithful responses because there might be some knowledge conflict between these two systems. So that's something that's heavily researched, but I think this particular approach is a really neat way to kind of address or you know, aiming to address this particular pro problem to some extent. I've seen a lot of papers kind of presenting very similar ideas. I, I believe I shared another paper the other day that presents something really interesting where they go directly to try to assess you know, why exactly is there conflicts, where exactly are these conflicts happening with this information retrieval system and the language model. So there's a lot of interesting research that's going on. If you want to keep track of that, I'll be doing more of those summaries or those, of those papers here in this uh, channel. The experiments and results section here. So we have a bunch of experiments and results, but I'll just kind of highlight, there's a lot of like sections here that show the results that they're getting. This one was, the, I think, the more, the high level results, which, which shows that this particular approach is effective. But we're gonna go into a few more details with the particular um, approach here. You can start to see that the effectiveness of using right this particular token, how it improves, especially when using that additional context, it shows you how it improves compared to the never retrieve LLM, which is this part, right? So this is a significant improvement. Although like 33%, I think it's quite low. You know, this is probably not production ready, but I believe that if you're working on a, spe on a specific problem, um, you know, you might be able to get this a lot higher. So. I think this is, has a lot of potential, even though there is a, a really low accuracy there. And they go into that, right? They explain, oh, you know, they get this very low results, but, you know, the point they're trying to prove is that by training these models to explicitly know when to when to add additional context, they can get better results. So I think what would be interesting to test out, if you have something that you're trying or a data set that you're trying, you can fine tune a small language model. You can even go smaller potentially for a task like this. I think this is where the power of small language model actually comes in to be used you know, to decide or build components like this in your overall system that is leveraging large language models. There are a lot more results here. I mean, they show also that you know, when you use a retriever, you know, normally you still have this kind of difficult situation or challenges where the system is not really performing as accurately as you may want. And, and this goes back to the point that I was you know, calling out earlier, which is this knowledge conflict. Uh, but you can see here some additional results. You can check out this table and you can read here more about table four and table three. Those are interesting additional results. I'm not gonna get into those because I wanna keep this video short, but I think those are interesting results to also kind of look at as well. You can try to maybe compare also with, you know, uh, create baselines with 
bigger systems, you know, these new systems like GPT-4 or cloud and so on. But I think, you know, these models are more capable. Obviously, they're bigger systems. They probably have, you know, more more access to more knowledge and so on. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they perform and if you can build some kind of comparison. So that will be it for this paper. I mean, the, the big takeaway here, as I mentioned, was to potentially use these smaller language models to build you know, these interesting components that can help increase the overall accuracy of your, in this case, like a RAG system, right? So I think this is the way we should be using large language models, right? In combination with, you know, what we already potentially have today, like an information retrieval system. So this paper was interesting. Hopefully it was interesting to you. That's just a quick summary of it. Um, hopefully there's kind of a takeaway for you here as well. Maybe you could use it in whatever you're building or doing research on. And I'll be covering a lot more of these papers. My style will be, I won't go too much into details. What I will be focusing on is trying to cover like interesting insights and interesting results that are more applicable to maybe the kind of applications that you're trying to build and so forth. That's kind of the angle that I'm coming at. Their approach will be a little bit different because I'm more focusing on the application side of things. So any paper that I see, if you see any paper out there that you would potentially like me to summarize as well, I'll, I'll shoot for that as well if I can, if I have the time. But the idea is that I will kind of create some of these papers that I find interesting. If you leave a like and if you comment on it and you subscribe to the channel, that tells me a lot that this might be interesting for you. So please do that for me and that'll be really helpful and I really appreciate that. So catch you in the next one. Thank you for listening and goodbye.